It is March 9th, 1916, and Italy is preparing its troops for the first battle of its second year in World War I. Following the 1915 battles, which were the first four battles of Isonzo, Italy had seen very little success on its front. Hoping to change this, Luigi Taderna spent the winter regrouping his army to make it much larger, adding eight new divisions to its offensive line, and would try the same plan it tried during the first four battles of Isonzo. This would result in the fifth battle of Isonzo, lasting from March 9th to March 15th. The main purpose of this was to not really see any strategic victory, but to try and get Austro-Hungary to shift some of its soldiers away from the eastern in front so that way the Russians could perhaps see some real success. However, no real changes to the front would happen at all, and Austro-Hungary, if anything, would send more soldiers to the Italian front, convinced that they could do a decisive blow against Taderna's tried and failed tactics. In total, the Italians would take 1,800 casualties during the Battle of Isonzo, while the Austro-Hungarians would take 1,900. This is not any major differences, but it should be noted that for such a short time fighting, this is a lot of deaths for really nothing to come out of either side. As I said earlier though, the 5th Battle of Isonzo was not the Austro-Hungarians' main focus. The Austro-Hungarians had other ambitions, mainly the strategy called the Strauss Expedition, where they believed that they would be able to lead an offensive into Italy and do large damage to the Italian infrastructure and knock them out of the war permanently. This would lead to the Battle of Asiago, also known as the Trentino Offensive, lasting from May 15th to June 10th. Austro-Hungarians in the battle would be led by Field Marshal Konrad Hotzendorf, an Austrian-born man who was in charge of the majority of the Austro-Hungarian army at this point in time. He believed that he would be able to use his greater numbers of around 300 battalions and 2,000 guns to break through the Italian line and completely end the deadlock that had been faced on this front the previous year. The defending Italian front would be led by General Luigi Taderna, who was in charge of the previous four battles of Isonzo and was the commander of the Italian army as a whole. He would use previous fortifications built during the earlier battles and the natural terrain of the Alps to hold despite the massive disadvantage he had in troop numbers. The battle would begin with the Austro-Hungarians using their now greatly increased number of artillery to bombard the entire Italian line. The bombardments would cause a lot of fires, including a fire that would burn most of Trentino. The Austro-Hungarians would follow up this barrage with an all-out offensive. This offensive would succeed, pushing through the Italian center front and allowing them access to the Venetian plains. However, they would be unable to destroy the Italian flanks as they were very dug into the surrounding Alps. The Italians were now in a bad position, as the Austro-Hungarians, if they continued their push, would be able to occupy the Venetian plains, which, if it occurred, would allow them to encircle and detach the entire Italian front line, which would cost Italy the war. Recognizing this issue, Luigi Taderna would appoint the 5th Army under Pietro Furguni to create a new defensive line in front of the Austro-Hungarians. This new defensive line would be largely built using hills and surrounding mountains in the Alps. This line would work, and it would temporarily stop the offensive long enough for new soldiers and new recruits to resupply the 5th Army and other armies, so that way they could create a solid defensive position to completely stall the Strauss expedition. With the failure of the Strauss expedition to do a quick offensive into Italy and cripple the country, Already, the Austro-Hungarians were in hot water. This hot water became boiling, however, when the Russians decided to invade Galatia. This would force Hasseldorf to send his soldiers back east to deal with the Russians, and would make his entire operation as a whole a failure. And this would largely end the Battle of Asiago. The Austrian Strauss expedition was not without its heavy costs. Italy had lost 15,000 men, with 76,000 wounded, Austro-Hungary, 10,000 men with 45,000 wounded. This damage was unacceptable on both sides. While the Italians had stopped the Strauss expedition, they had done it in extreme costs. And while the Austro-Hungarians had gotten a momentary victory against the Italians, 
who was ultimately off for nothing. Both of these effects would travel back home following the Battle of Asiago. In Austro-Hungary, the Trentino Offensive's failure was not something its leaders or people were going to forget anytime soon. The massive cost of life and without any real successes in the Italian front would eventually be part of the reason why Hotzendorf would be demoted near the end of the war. And it would also feed the growing disdain for the Austro-Hungarians held in the western parts of the country, as the blatant loss of life was viewed as something that was not very popular. However, the main country to receive criticism was actually the country that won the battle, Italy. Back home in Italy, the Italians were so angry about the massive casualty counts in the battle that they would riot in the streets and eventually force the then Prime Minister Salandra to resign. Replacing him would be the new Prime Minister, Paolo Boselli. Alright guys, that is it for this video. Next week I plan on covering the 6th Battle of Isonzo and the Battle of Dorbara Do. If you're looking forward to that, then make sure you subscribe and keep notifications on for when that video drops. I also would like, if you guys have any cool little fun facts, to drop them in the comment section. I love seeing them and they, they do interest me. That is it though, and I hope to see you guys next time.